My backhand sucks. My backhand has always been a weakness in singles and I want to change that. My plan right now is to hit 600 backhands in the morning on the ball machine and then another 600 in the evening. That way, in between each session, I can film it and see what I can learn from each session and improve it in the next one. This will be 1,200 backhands per day, which comes out to 16,800 backhands in 14 days. Is it so hard to get any work done? We'll just down line. You're gonna need me a lot of work. Ugh. All right, so even just within day one, I've already spotted three things that I could do a whole lot better with my backhand. First, I hit the ball really flat, and I really didn't know how flat I hit the ball until I looked at the tape of me hitting. The main reason for this is because my paddle head is almost never below the height of the ball, which prevents me from brushing up on it to create topspin. If you look at some of my backhands, it becomes pretty obvious that my paddle head can't get below the ball because my legs are basically locked straight up and down. The funny thing is, if you asked me if I bend my knees, I probably would have told you yes, but watching these video clips, it's pretty obvious that I don't. So already filming myself has shown me a pretty massive flaw with my backhand. The second issue I found is that I contact the ball too close to my body. Now I'm making a bit of an assumption on this one, but I don't think it's great how close the ball is to my body when I make contact, which is essentially jamming myself up before I even hit the ball. My hunch is that this is preventing me from maximizing my power. Number three, not contacting the ball far enough out in front. Similar to number two, I think because I'm jamming myself with my arms bent, this is preventing me from striking the ball out in front of my body. I think with these three changes alone, I could make pretty big improvements to my backhand. So those are what I'm going to try and focus on in the next session. All right, so it turns out that uh, for the second session of day one, the ball machine was not charged. So that's charging now, and I'm going to use my brother who was gonna be filming some of this today and he's just gonna feed me a bunch of balls. So, yeah, that is not how I expected day one to go. Okay, so for day two, my primary goal was to get the paddle head to drop below the ball so that I could brush up on it and get more topspin. What I decided to do was to have no backswing and instead just drop the paddle head down below my waist, hold it, and then swing up on the ball. What's funny is the entire first session that I was doing this, I thought I was doing it great. I was like, oh, this feels really nice. I'm holding the paddle head below. I'm, you know, brushing up on it. But then when I watched the footage back, I realized I was dropping the paddle head, but then I would continue to take it back further to the point where it gets level with the ball and still hit the ball really flat. <laughs> so really in the first two days, I would tell you guys that I can't recommend filming yourself enough because I really thought that I was doing what I set out to do and it turns out that I really wasn't even that close to doing it. Even after the second session, I realized I still wasn't doing it much better than I thought. I was focusing too much on using my arms to drop the paddle head, when instead I should have been focusing on getting low with my legs to get my entire body lower than the ball. You can see in these clips that I'm still not bending my knees as much as I should be. It might be a long 14 days if in two sessions I couldn't get myself to do the one thing I wanted to focus on. Okay, so we have finished day three and I'm feeling a lot better about this. I feel like the notes I made from session one were basically that I wasn't getting low enough and I need to take the ball as it's descending a little bit or just as it's hitting its peak because what I found is if I take the ball when it bounces too high, you know, like a little bit above my hip, I just can't get under it and actually get any power. 
and all of my best shots are just done when I stay low and really wait transfer forward. Like the shot is astronomically better than when I don't do that. Another thing that this made me realize just on a lot of these balls, depending on where the machine fed it to, is I just need to work on my footwork a little bit more. So today I tried to be more active with my feet before I feel like I was kind of standing in place and just waiting for the ball. This time I was split stepping a lot more. I was bouncing around and then like moving to the ball and like getting my feet set. Something a little more realistic that you would actually see in a game. So I thought that was good and it was making me just feel a little bit better about like how I needed to move my feet and how low I needed to get in order to hit the ball how I want it. So honestly, for the next day or two, I'm probably just gonna do a lot more of what I did today because I already feel like there's a good amount of improvement in terms of the top spin and the placement on the ball. I do still think power could be a little bit better, but I think that will come as I get the rest of the technique down. Oh, man. Okay, so we're currently on day four and I finished the morning session, which honestly just wasn't that great. I think I was just tired. Even though my body felt pretty good this morning, I felt like I got good sleep. I didn't feel that sore. Something was just off. I think I was being a little lazy, but a lot more missed balls, a lot of balls not doing what I wanted them to do. But I will say the one thing I'm noticing doing this challenge so far is it is so hard to get any work done. Like I'm just, right now I'm just tired. Like I just wanna go take a nap and it's only 10.30 a.m. Uh, so getting any work done is kind of hard. So I'm curious to see how this goes for the next two weeks. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta go get some work done. All right, so good news is session two on day four, way better. I definitely just wasn't stepping through the ball on my uh, follow through and it's feeling much better now that I am. It's amazing, honestly, how such a small thing can make such a big difference. But uh, the only thing is, holy cow, it's hot. It's like 93 degrees today. I'm sore, I'm tired. It's a lot of pickleball when you do 1200 backhands a day and then people also want to play like two hours worth of games with you in the evening. So yeah, we're gonna grind out these backhands, but man, it's hot today. It's really hot. Gonna have to dig deep for some motivation. All right, it's day five and I must be sick. My nose is plugged, I have a headache. It's currently 7.30. So I don't think we're going to get to do the session this morning. I think I'm going to try and get the evening one, but ugh, I just don't feel great. Well, getting sick was not something I planned for in this challenge. And honestly, I rarely get sick and at most it happens once a year. So I was pretty bummed to not be able to do this challenge 14 days straight. But at the end of the day, I think it matters a lot less how many days straight I did versus getting in the reps and focusing on what needed to be improved each time I go out. When I started this, I was really dead set on doing 14 days straight, but in hindsight, I think doing this many reps with no days off probably isn't a good idea to begin with. All right, guys, so we are past the week mark of hitting a bunch of backhands now, and I figured we would bring in some recruitment. This is Onik Lohani. He's one of our pros in Minnesota. He actually just played Ben recently, and the commentators pretty much only talked about his backhand the entire time. So I figured we'd take a lesson with one of, at least in my opinion, one of the best backhands I've ever seen. It's honestly better than his forehand. I mean, oh. you, you prefer it over your forehand, don't you? Oh, for sure. I would hit, I would run around my forehand if I could, <laughs> if, I, if I could. Yeah, so he's going to help me out with my backhand today. We're just going to go over and pick it apart. And he says, we'll be here till it's perfect. So we might be here for a couple weeks. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> we'll go down line. We're going to need a lot of work. A lot of work, a lot of work. Uh, I'm nervous. <laughs> there we go. There's his first good one. <laughs> We just needed a couple. Actually, it looks pretty good. I like his form. I like how he gets low. I like how he extends through the ball. Those first first couple were just an anomaly, I think. <laughs> Hopefully. Okay, so one thing right off the bat, I like how you 
I like how you generate power. I think you can do a lot more with precision and power. So how I look at a backhand is similar to your forehand side. A lot of the best players that have a huge forehand have a big whip on the ball and they just wait for that ball at the right, right time. Yep. I like your stroke, it's fluid, yep. but when that ball comes in, if you can try to, I like how you're getting low yep. and with, with that ball, you're trying to you know come into contact with that ball yep. as you strike it. But as you're swinging through, try to almost kind of flick through that ball and have a quick -er release through that ball. Sure. So as you're going through, instead of trying to keep your stroke the same momentum throughout like this, where yours is more fluid, try to go here. And when you're going here, just kind of whip, almost kind of whip through that ball. And yours is a little flatter. If you whip through that ball with a closed uh, paddle face, it'll arc that ball lower, and that's one of the best twoies in the game where you can have power and arc that ball low, where then you can even crash after that ball. Wait, good. Oh, a little higher. I see what you mean though. And now what you're gonna have to do, you'll see it in, you'll see it in any good twoie. How, what I like to watch is, I love to watch Connor, because yeah. his twoie, uh, I mean, I would like to think I have a similar twoie, but you'll see on our twoies, we're down here yeah. when we're striking that ball. Yep. It's not even, right now when I look at you, yep. you're a little bit more upright. Yep. I want you, you know, instead of being up here when you're striking that ball, I want you down here yep. so you can kind of swing through and strike through that ball and then come back up to, to your ready position. Good, out, 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 out. Now forward, good. Up, 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 up. Good, up, good. Back. Good ball. Good ball. Back, back, back. <laughs> Part of it's gonna be realization too. Yep. Obviously just what me screaming should be going on in your head. Yeah. Ideally. So what, what I'll say is, and I'll speak candidly. <laughs> yeah. His footwork <laughs> needs a little bit of improvement. <laughs> You'll see. I, I like your footwork. Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I, 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 to be honest, I think he's a little slow. <laughs> if you look, I mean, it just, if, if you think about it too. Yeah. You, you're hitting a two handed backhand, which means you're not going to have much room for error. Yeah. You're going to have to get your body into the right position. Body yep. positioning to hit that ball is going to be key. Yep. And where does that start? It starts with the footwork. If you look at the best singles players with their twoies, they're constantly moving, trying to get little steps. Yep. I always thought about this in tennis too. It's all about the little steps to get yourself in position. Instead of just taking one, two, three, four steps to get in position, take an extra five or six you know, little steps just to get that exact body positioning so you can contort your upper body. Because if your lower body's in the right position, then your upper body just naturally swings through the ball. Sure. So on that last ball that we were just hitting, right? I fed you a little higher ball. Yep. You took maybe one or two steps back. Yep. Ball was already up here. You were trying to swing through and it, it, it either sails on you or it goes in the net. Yeah. If you can take you know one or two quicker steps back, let that ball drop a, a little bit more to that body uh, or to the height of the ball that you want between your knee and your hip, it'll be a much more smoother swing through that ball. If you guys want me to post that full lesson with Onik, let me know in a comment down below. One of the biggest things I realized working with Onik is that my footwork is horrible. I already had a hunch that it probably wasn't great, but listening to him drill where I needed to move very loudly into my ears made it very apparent that I don't move that well or that fast. Also, it just really showed me that when I needed to get as low as he wanted me to while also moving as quickly, my legs got sore really, really fast. So working on the strength of my legs and also the speed is going to be something that I definitely need to focus on in the future. The second thing I learned was about accelerating through the ball really quickly rather than having one big motion that's kind of all at the same pace. He basically told me you should bring the paddle back, hold it, and then whip through the ball really quickly versus me. I was doing kind of like a big wind up and then accelerating through the ball, but it was kind of all at the same speed. 
and as I was doing this with him, it was very obvious how much better the backhand was. I felt like I was getting more topspin and I was getting more pace on the ball. Third, and we kind of already knew this, but watching Onik in slow motion made it so obvious to me that I'm still not getting low enough with my legs. When you watch him, the guy is practically on the ground. And if you compare it to the first day of my backhands, you can see a massive difference between how low he gets and how low I was getting. I'm not gonna lie, it's really hard to be consistent with this. In fact, it's harder than I thought it would be. I thought, oh, 14 days straight, how hard could it be? But really the time commitment is a good portion of my day. So in the mornings, it's about an hour and a half. Uh, you know, you get there, you set up, uh, you hit all the balls, you pick up the balls six times, you put them in the machine, water breaks, everything comes out to about an hour and a half. And then, you know, I get the afternoon break, I review the footage, that actually probably adds another half hour. So, you know, two hours at that point. And then you do it again in the evening. So probably about four hours of my day are used on this and it's been hot, it's been windy, uh, you know, you wake up sore and you don't really wanna do it. So it's been difficult. Like, I, this was definitely harder than I anticipated it being, especially just the physical toll it takes on your body. I think playing every day is one thing, but when you're working on a new skill set, you're focusing harder and you're making your body do things that it probably doesn't usually do, it really hits you a lot harder. So yeah, that's just an interesting thing I thought about doing this challenge because I really didn't see that coming. All right, we finally finished the challenge and I'm so excited to be done with this. I really did have a lot of fun doing it, but man, I just could not wait for things to kind of go back to normal. You can watch some highlights of my backhand after doing this training right here. Now here are the top five things that I learned while doing this that I'll share with you. One, you need to bend your legs, like a lot. I don't care how much you think you're bending your legs right now, you can probably still go even lower than you already think. This was evident to me throughout the entire challenge. And to be honest, even as it stands right now, I still think I could do a better job of bending my legs. Bending your legs is going to let you get below the ball so that you can brush up on it and generate a lot of topspin. And I also think using your bigger muscles, like your legs, will help you get more power and explode through the ball. I really think if there was going to be one thing you could take away from this video, it's that you really, really need to bend your legs. Because I think if you don't do that properly, then everything else just falls apart after this. Number two would be make sure you're transferring the weight of your body through the ball as you hit. I don't think I was terrible at this when I started, but I definitely could have been doing better. So throughout this challenge, I made sure to close my stance as much as I could, which is basically just turning sideways. And then as you hit the ball, you're gonna take your back hip or your back leg and rotate it through the front. So more of your body is transferring into the ball versus just swinging with your arm. And this definitely makes a huge difference in the amount of power that you can get when driving the ball. All right, number three, which kind of ties into number one a little bit, is that you need to strike the ball between your hip and your knee. When Anik told me about this, it made so much sense and made it even more clear why a lot of my initial training in the beginning felt so bad. If you look at the start of this challenge, I was striking a lot of the balls above my hip, which made it hard to put topspin on it. And honestly, even from that position, I had to be so upright to hit that ball 
that it was really hard to get power through it as well. So if the balls are coming to you that high, you probably need to take a couple steps back, let the ball drop, get low, and then strike the ball. And doing this definitely made a big difference on the amount of power and the consistency that I was getting from my backhand. Number four, this is a really small one that I don't think is going to be for everyone, but I do think you should give it a try. So ever since I've been using a two-handed backhand, which probably started well over a year ago now, I've always put my finger on the back of the paddle. This isn't uncommon. You'll see a lot of the top players in pickleball do this. But within the first couple days of training, my wrist and my finger were hurting so badly from the amount of repetitions I was doing that I decided to just put my finger on the handle with the rest of my hand. Now, depending on the paddle you use and how big your hands are, this may be easier or harder for you to do. Thankfully for me, I have pretty average sized hands and the double black diamond handle is long enough. So I was able to put both hands on there and for me, it just felt like I was able to get more power. There was something about my finger being back there that just made my backhand feel kind of off or weird. I can't really explain it. And again, I don't know that this is necessarily better or worse, but for me, I found that my backhand just started feeling better and I also stopped having pain in my hand after I stopped doing it. Now, of course, Anna Lee Waters has one of the best two-handed backhands in the game and she puts her finger on the back, so take it for what it's worth to you. All right, number five is that your footwork needs to be good, especially for a two-handed backhand because you're gonna have less reach than when you use one arm. This was made so obvious to me when I started drilling with Onik because he was just screaming into my ear, up, 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 back, 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 go to the side, you know, wherever. Like it was very obvious that I moved very slow and that I probably wasn't taking as many small steps as I should have been. It was a lot of bigger steps, wait and then go, but I think a lot of smaller steps would have helped me get into a proper ready position and then be able to strike the ball. So something I started doing later into these sessions is that I would have the ball feed into a position on the court that I had to run to, strike the ball, go back to where I was, and then run to it and hit it again. This allowed me to focus on my footwork a little bit and it was honestly very clear to me when I was hitting the ball bad that it's because I got to the ball too slow or I wasn't getting into a proper ready position. This is probably the area that I'm still the weakest at. I'm gonna have to put a lot of effort into improving my footwork, but at least now I'm aware of it and I can think about it anytime I go onto the court. It's been awesome to see such a huge improvement in just 14 days and really, that's probably what you can expect if you're gonna hit over 15,000 repetitions of a single shot in such a small time frame. I'm honestly really impressed with the transformation that I've had in two weeks, and while there's still plenty of work that could be done on my backhand, I now feel like I have an additional weapon in my game, and it's not just something that people can pick on and get a bunch of free points. So yeah, this was a lot of fun to do. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a comment down below, and maybe we'll try this with another shot. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.